A few hours later, Halloween was underway. The engines all murmured to one another as the minutes ticked by, knowing at some point the spirit of 311 would emerge. The air had slowly grown colder and they started to shiver with great density, for they could sense the presence of that the ghost engine was nearby. I don't like the looks of this. It's here somewhere. I can sense it. Sense it? I can feel it. And it's creeping the hell out of me. Same here. Yeah, likewise. Guys, look! She's here. It looks like you were all been expecting me. So, you've decided to show up, 311? I see that those who encountered me previously, long ago, are still here. Those whom I spared and never took. Oh, we remember still. Not a day goes by when I think about our meeting. You were that close to sending me to my demise, but you let me go after seeing my number was not the same as yours. Time may have moved on, but my first time seeing you in that horrid form of yours still haunts me, yet... You didn't bother to take me either. I was foolish to let you live. I should have taken you and the others. You were all running over my place of rest. Others who were carrying the same number as me would get the ultimate punishment, and they did. of Sodor that I heard so much about. <laughs> Still in fear of your first time seeing the demon in person? Please, have mercy! We have nothing to do what happened to you! If you're here to take us, do it now. We can't even bear to look at you anymore. The end has come, guys. Might as well say our farewells. Wait, before you kill one of us, please let us understand you. You're not all evil, are you? There is a part of you that still holds goodness within, madam. She won't listen, Edward! Don't even try and help her! If you do, she'll- It's worth it for me to have another try. Edward, no! What are you thinking? She might not- I can do this, James. I've done this before with Mary at Henry's Tunnel not long ago. Three one one. This is no place for someone such as yourself to be in. It's unfamiliar and far away from where you came from. You should be with your friends, those that were there for you. They might be missing you right now. Time has moved on since the tragic accident in 1957, and we on the island of Sodor think you should too. You think it is time? No. No! 
It's not time! Prepare for you all to meet your final moments alive on this railway! Before that happens, there is one question everyone wants to know. Why have you been called the demon for all of these years? You're the only one who has ever asked me. No one has ever asked why I bestowed that name. Humans can't understand it, but I can. It so happened to be the thing that I learned to live with. But I'm not a demon. I never was. I only called myself that, all because of the bad things I had to go through. My bad luck streak is what caused it most. Even when I went to work on the clench field, it only got worse. Being called a who dude or jinx locomotive hurt me and filled me with shame. And when I injured and killed 20 men, that wasn't my fault. I didn't mean to do that. I wasn't to be held responsible. It was my unlucky streak that did it. For decades, everyone feared me. Now I'm here on a railway far from home, spreading my legend along for others to know and understand what I went through in my life. And yet here I stand and you don't show it. We're not afraid of you, madam. We feel sorry for you. We take pity and respect for any engine who's met a tragic end. Now that you've told us, we can actually understand why you've been feared by so many over the years. You have my sympathy. How... how can you not be afraid of me? This steel lump of hatred. This dark and horrid form. You just wanted to find peace and move on. Yeah, that's right. You've not found it yet. But this could be the time for it. For it to finally be put down. Edward's right. As he said before, time has moved on since that accident. No. I can't. I just can't. There's no way I can go and move on. For nearly 60 years, I've tried to cross over that very same place where my life ended. But I failed time and time again. And to those in the CSW who grew into mistrusting me, the company's president, and the board of directors looking at me as a liability that needed to be put down. How cruel of them to think of me that way. I had no friends, just an empty shell of complete loneliness. The only real friends I ever had were my engineer, my fireman, and the manager. They were the only ones who really cared about me. For decades, my horde form has killed so many lives, humans or engines. When trespassing to my gravesite whenever my anniversary comes, they had to pay and suffer. I couldn't control it. It was out of my reach. Yet the feeling was so relieving whenever a new victim was added to my list. Now that I'm here on Sodor, a railway I heard of, I've wanted more. To feel my suffering, my loneliness, my pain and the misery that I've had to put up with. You've only come to know about me and blindly looked by, thinking that I had a normal demise. How cold-hearted of you! I wanted this to end, but not like this. Not with me dead. Those who had wanted me to be put down and taken away, they had to pay! But a rescue operation from the CSW was sent to find you, but they never did. They did find me. However, they could have recovered and restored me, but they didn't. When they located me, the manager wasted no time in setting up the cranes to start clearing the debris. The company president arrived not long after they had started lifting the remains of the few flats. The president looked down at my battered remains far below and smirked 
when he told the manager. I want the bodies of the engineer, fireman, and conductor removed from the wreck as quickly as possible. And clean up the rest of these cars. And what of the 311? That locomotive has caused more damage to this railroad than any other I've seen in my 40 years as president of this company. And it's costing us millions just to get her running again after she wrecks, as well as paying the medical bills of all the railroad men she maimed when that money could be used for many other things. It was about time that she was put in her rightful place. In light of her rather appalling service record with both the Clinchfield and our railroad and sweep this whole fiasco under the rug. But sir, we can't just leave her here. She doesn't deserve to be simply forgotten just because of something she could not control. Silence! Now do as I say and clean this mess up or I will end up releasing you as your role as manager. Understand? The manager headed back to the work crew, and the president climbed into his car and headed back down the mountain to Campton. I was so heartbroken and enraged by what he had said. By the next day at dawn, the wreck was cleared away, but I remained in my watery grave. To this day, my remains are still there, but no one has ever noticed. The president of the CSW ordered the destruction of any information of me during my time on the Campton Southwestern. My name was among the files destroyed, fading into the mists of time. And when my spirit started showing up once a year, everyone just started to refer to me by my number. How awful. How oh, heartbreaking. So you see, I'm not what everyone thinks I am. I only called myself the demon for I wanted revenge. And yes, I did think those locomotives and diesels who had the same number was a mockery to me. And they had to suffer a terrible fate. To me, it was to serve the CSW a lesson for what they did to me. And the president who I blamed the most would meet a worthy death. And that was my ultimate revenge. That no good idiotic no no 311 i did i avenged you my engineer fireman and manager <laughs> <laughs>